Welcome to windsurfing.tv for the second training diaries of 2018. Uh, and yes, you have guessed it. We've had a change of location. As I said before, we're over in sunny Cape Town. Oh yeah, and we've pimped out this year. We've got a nice house. We've got the jacuzzi. We've got the pool. What we didn't count on is there is a little bit of a water shortage here in Cape Town, which is probably why we got the house cheap because the pool is half empty. The jacuzzi is empty. Uh, but anyway, it's still, uh, we're here and we're ready to rock. I say we are here because I'm obviously here doing the coaching uh, training diaries with Mr. Colin Dixon of Windsurf Coaching. Uh, and that is kicking off on Sunday. So we've got a week. We've got uh, 10 guys uh, and girls uh, coming out. Uh, we're going to be putting them through their paces, videoing it and documenting all that. Uh, and that is going to go down here in Cape Town. And the conditions so far have been pretty brutal so uh it's going to be an interesting week that's for sure so i thought i'd try and bang out a quick uh, training diary before we start the coaching uh, diaries uh, give you a quick uh, understanding of what's been going on or who's here i tell you what who's here who's not here it would be easy to tell you who's not here because every man and his dog is in cape town it feels like this year but we have already lost one member yeah uh, he's still in Cape Town, but he's not in a good way. Yeah, you've probably been seeing it on the social media, but Alessio Stilrich took a nasty wipeout uh, when we first got here at Cape Point, uh, and he came off pretty badly, uh, basically snapped his leg in, in sort of two places. You can see the x-ray, a real nasty one. He hit the lip. It kind of threw him into a bit of an aerial, he said. Well, I mean, I went to see him last night, and... But then it came down on the lip and then it kind of spun underneath him. And wow, that is one nasty break. At first thought, I thought it was a nice, easy break. But when you look, there's like that double thing in it. I um, mean, he's just uh, getting another check before he goes home. They've got to check on a ligament. And the, the doctor here really wanted to make sure that was all good before he let him leave the country. So he is in good spirits, I mean, considering. But it's going to be a lengthy uh, break for him now. He's looking at about six months before he's going to be back up and running. Uh, literally. Uh, so yeah, uh, just a big, uh, big up to uh, Alessio. By all accounts, he was absolutely killing it on the water. Uh, but this trip has definitely been cut short. So let's hope he has a, a nice speedy recovery and comes back to the top of his game because he is going to be one of the challenges in the future for that world title. No doubt about it. Um, Let's go straight uh, from Alessio and we'll get out of the waves, it's safer. Uh, and we'll go check out the lake because it is the who's who of freestyle windsurfing at the lake right now. We've got like number one, number two in the world for the last couple of years. Ten times, is it ten times world champion? Guito Soto, eight, I can't even remember how many he's won now. It's Sarah Keita who's got ten, but she was there. Uh, we have Uda as well, she's there. Uh, and we've got all the sort of up and coming freestyles and they have been throwing down the moves. My God, uh, you've got to say there is one guy that I will put money on will be world champion one day. And it is, of course, Amado Vriesweit. That guy is absolutely on fire. Yeah, his signature move is definitely the double air culo. And he has that move on lock. It is just does it with his eyes shut. I think I saw him do four in a row the other day. Uh, and I'm pretty sure one was almost played. Yeah, that boy has got some serious, serious skills. He's got all the double moves. He's got the massive sort of air cabbies. He's got big, huge air scopus and all these sort of moves. Like I say, and all the double combo moves as well. He has got some serious uh, style. Uh, what else is he doing? He had a couple of big crashes. Don't oh. think these moves come easy because he had some big takedowns. Uh, I think pretty much if I did a crash like that, I'd be walking away with uh, bits of uh, body dotted around the lake because he was coming off with some serious speed, but somehow just sails away uh, and gets on with it. Um, he's also been playing in the waves as well, and he's been uh, getting some serious height. Uh, so definitely Amado Vriesweik is one to watch uh, this year. So all eyes will be on him uh, and his training buddy here. Uh, who are hanging out together. They're riding in probably the pimpest car in Cape Town. 
Old school, yeah, the old big Merc, laid back. Just look at the skills on these boys. You can just see proper gangsters. Uh, so when you've got these two guys training together, they're in the gym together, and I'm not joking, uh, they're big lads. Uh, I seen them on the beach the other day, and I thought, my God, he is massive. Then I did realize he had an impact vest underneath the wetsuit. So I was thinking, my God, maybe the steroids are kicking in. I'm joking, they're not doing steroids, but they are training super hard. Uh, Guita Estrado and pretty much the whole of the North team were on the lake the other day. We had Boss on, we had Ricardo Marca. Uh, all three were throwing down the skills as well. Guito was actually having a bit of a mare when I was filming it. Oh, uh, but wait. then as, this, as the session went on, he sort of got his act together. But in the waves, he's been throwing down some big stuff as well. I saw him do a pretty crazy double the other day at Whitsands. So he's venturing into the waves, and I think we're going to see a proper assault on that wave uh, fleet this year from Greta Estrado. So again, he's another one. He made his mark, I think, in Silt. He had some big heats, took down some big names. Um, so yeah, we'll be looking definitely at him. Uh, another one that's sort of been on the lake, uh, Antoine Albert. Uh, he had a good year on the freestyle tour, I thought, really come of age, I think, this year. Uh, and he was throwing down some big skills on the lake, big air scopes, oh, air cabbies, I can't remember. Man. But a bit of that, so he had that all going on and some pretty uh, amazing saves as well. Um, also some double moves, chucking them in. Uh, he's looked pretty consistent. Again, another guy who's pushing into the waves. And I think it's a good move by the freestylers to get themselves doing two disciplines. Obviously, not uh, so many freestyle events on the PLA World Tour. So really good to see them pushing it in the waves. And it's obviously helping their jumping. We've, we've also got... Uh, well, two of the top women freestylers here. We've got uh, Uda Johanna and we've got obviously Sarah Keita off Ringer. And them two have been going head to head on the water. Again, I was watching them and they were pulling off. I saw Uda get some perfect scope boost. Sarah Keita get a spot culo. I start filming. It all went a little bit wrong. The wind picked up and it went a bit messy. So uh, it wasn't the easiest conditions when I filmed them. Uh, but they've obviously been venturing out in the waves and stuff. Uh, I've been having a bit of giggle on the beach. Uh, and you're kind of thinking, you know, has Uda ever beaten Sarah Keita in competition? I don't think she has. But in the wrestling stakes, she's on another level. Taking her down, taking Keita down. I think Keita had to give up in the end. So Uda just showing she's got some muscles. Uh, so yeah, that is how it is looking pretty much on the freestyle front. Uh, but obviously Cape Town, it's all about the waves. And I said these guys and girls have been venturing out into the waves. Uh, but we've got a pretty big gun here this year. Uh, and I did read a quote on Facebook, I think, or Instagram the other day. That is, is his new favourite place to come jump in. It is, of course, Ricardo Campello. Yes, Ricardo Campello is in Cape Town and he is going huge. Oh, go on. Go on. Go on. Yeesh. Oh, that's large. Yeah, he is going absolutely massive. Oh, just big one foot backies. Uh, it didn't quite land the one I saw, but it was massive. And I was filming actually from an elevated, you know, sort of place. So it actually probably looks lower, but it was huge. A uh, big stall forward I saw him pull off in uh, Whitsands the other day, just going into orbit uh, and lands it. I seen him stall doubles. Uh, we've just had the actually Red Bull King of the Air. So the Kiters, it's their big, big jumping event. And he actually went out just before uh, the guys took to the water and put on a pretty solid show for the windsurfers. We were all like, go on, Ricardo. I think he gave us a pretty good name. So he has been uh, doing a bit of crowd pleasing and that is definitely what he does best. Uh, still looking at his boards. I don't see a board sponsor yet. Uh, he's painted them some funny colors, but there's no board sponsor on the horizon. A few people have been asking me, why can't he get a board sponsor? Well, the word on the street is he can get a board sponsor, but he doesn't want to take a deal. He knows how much he's worth and he's holding on for that. Um, like I said, spotted him on a few different boards here. So interesting to see. He's also sponsored obviously by Brunotti, seeing him supporting a new signature suit. Check that thing out. Yeah. It's even got like little drain holes at the bottom, which can definitely come in handy. Ew, 
<laughs> uh, anyway, when he jumps high, that must be the secret. That must be the secret. Uh, what else have we got to say? Like I say, lots of people here. I've got lots more going to be coming up in these diaries. Got footage from Victor Fernandez. Uh, we got stuff from Mark Parry. Mark Parry on fire at the moment, and I think he's uh, he's scaring a few people because he is keen. He's been here for nearly three months, uh, and he is pushing super hard. But more on him in uh, in future diaries. I can't give you all the stuff we've got so far um what else we got we got kennings truck uh, we got to say a big up to kennings they're supporting the coaching uh, clinic this year so uh, big up to kennings if you want to get a deal or you want to get a car when you come to cape town give kennings a call they give you a discount if you mention windsurfing tv or ben profit uh, they've been looking after the windsurfing kite surfing scene for a few years and they've got some solid solid trucks so we're rolling in style this year as well so uh, a thanks uh, to kennings uh, we also got to say massive thanks for everyone who chipped the beer money in last time I've been making use of that because I obviously if you've been following me on Instagram or Facebook had my 40th birthday I know what you're thinking I know I age well <laughs> no but I was 40 last Sunday uh, and it was a bit of a huge surprise because my sisters ended up surprised me. I didn't even know they were turning up uh, I opened the door and there they were just so stand there I'm like uh, what are you doing here and to top it off I was actually delayed I came from Australia obviously uh, and I was there was a cyclone in Mauritius so I was a bit delayed and it was all a bit tense I didn't realize why but now I know there was a surprise party I had loads of people around the house uh, and it was uh, it was pretty cool I've got I say so thanks to everyone who helped organize that and thanks to my sisters for coming out so we had a bit of a touristy week last week we're in between filming and stuff so yeah it's been so far it's been a hectic week it's gone so quickly um which is why I've not got this video out quicker. Uh, I was going to give you a recap of the uh, last bit of Australia, but obviously uh, that's going to be a bit of a problem now. Lancelin did happen since we saw. Uh, we was talking about putting the wet t-shirt competition, but uh, 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 they banned it. Yeah, Lancelin, Australia, had to call it off. They had too many complaints. Uh, but we did have a really good competition. We had the Waves, and I mean, it was the who's who of Wave Sailing. We had Costa there, uh, who obviously went up to win the event in the end in the Waves. We had Adam Lewis, fifth in the world this year. He finished second, actually took down Jager in the semis, which is a big one. Uh, then there was a uh, third and fourth battle between Jager Stone and Ben Profit. Yes, Jager Stone took me down in fair play. So he made up that podium. I come in fourth. I beat Dieter van der Eiken, though, so I was pretty chuffed. Uh, so I had to mention that. In the women, Justina Shaddy and Jane Seaman had a really close battle for first place, but it was Jane who got the nod in the end and took another victory in Lancelin Classic. Justina having to settle for second uh, with Miley Shirell in third. Uh, so it was a good turnout in the wave and then we had the race the forecast was bad uh, it was looking offshore they managed to squeeze it in they started a little bit early and we started in offshore and a few people me included started to go the wrong way we were heading towards the wrong uh, boy uh, which was a boat uh, I kind of recorrected myself halfway uh, and managed to fight my way back into third in the elite I actually wasn't third over the line there was a few people ahead of me from the open fleet and uh, Yes, Karen Yaggy, she was flying. She actually left the beach last, but the wind had swung by then, straight to the first mark, and she is quick. I didn't even see her, so she was flying. And obviously Alex Kuzan taking first place in the race, uh, coming from behind to take that victory, and just sneaking past Avon Griffith, the new Simmer team rider, on the last leg. So a really close battle between the top two riders uh, so that was a really good event uh, I've got to say I won ended up taking home the Peter Volwater Memorial Trophy which is a com you know combined result from the waves and the race so I was super happy because Pete was obviously a good friend of mine and Lancelin was a big event for him and uh, I think we did him proud on the Saturday night because we definitely had a few sherbets uh, so yeah there you go that's a racing review of what has been happening we will be bringing you more updates I'm going to be coming more regular now now. I've done the crazy week so now we're a little bit more settled we're gonna be bringing you stuff from the coaching clinic and the diaries like I say thanks everyone who's chucked the beer money in that's been awesome you legends that you are uh, and that is basically it so stay tuned windsurfing.tv we're gonna be coming back to you very soon
don't forget, uh, you can subscribe to the channel by clicking down here on the globe. Uh, you can click on and check the train diary from Australia. Uh, that was the first one we did in 2018. I'll put it over here. And obviously, if you want to chip in some beer money, you can click on the link over here. And don't forget, give us a thumbs up, like.